All right, people, it's another day. It's another day of madness. Uh, getting back to the Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade motion to disqualify evidentiary hearing that we witnessed last week in front of Judge Scott McAfee. The news of the day, Scott McAfee apparently donated it to Fannie Willis's election campaign back in 2020 before he was appointed as a judge. So who knows the circumstances under which he donated a whopping $150 to her campaign. But not only that, Apparently, he worked with Fannie Wade as well. This news is coming out of the Daily Caller, and it's, I don't know, I don't want to get too conspiratorial. It's disconcerting, especially given my prediction that Scott McAfee is going to disqualify Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade from the prosecution of Trump and the other RICO defendants. I've made my prediction, and I'm sticking to it. I make my predictions loud and proud so that if I'm wrong, you know, the internet can make fun of me forever for having been wrong. But I've made my prediction. I think the judge gets it. I think the judge is smart. I think the judge is reasonably objective. This does throw a little wrench in the spokes. I'm going to read a bit from the Daily Caller's article so you can know exactly what's going on. Judge overseeing Trump's Georgia case donated to Fannie Willis campaign prior to appointment. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee, who is overseeing the case against former President Donald Trump, made a small donation of $150 to Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis's campaign prior to his appointment. McAfee also formally worked under Fannie Willis when she led the complex trial division in the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, according to the New York Times. Yeah, working under Fannie Willis is probably not the best phraseology under the circumstances, unless it was intended to be a humorous double entendre. I'd be less concerned about the $150 donation than I would be about him having worked under Fannie Willis. Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. Yeah, but these are two mildly disconcerting facts. I think the most disconcerting fact of all of this is that he didn't disclose it to Trump's counsel or any of the attorneys for the other defendants, as he probably should have. It's immaterial, I think. It's a small, incestuous community within the legal community, so I wouldn't make such a big deal of it. But he ought to have disclosed it, at the very least, so that everybody could know and plead accordingly in full awareness of fact and law. The $150 donation. I don't find it particularly shocking. I looked up as best I could what the maximum contributions were, and it does seem that $150 is in fact a very nominal donation. Might he have made it so that there would be no pressure, no guilt that he didn't make it? Might he have made it so that he would not be accused of whatever isms you want to accuse him of for having not donated to the black woman's election campaign? We know how identity politics works. Set that aside. It seems that the maximum donations are upwards of thousands of dollars, I think it's about 4,800, I might be wrong. Thousands of dollars, according to Denton's website. Denton's being a pretty big law firm from what I understand. From the Denton's website, due to the current increase, Georgia's campaign contribution limits sits 20% higher than they did in 2019. Under the new limits, individual donors will now be able to give up to $8,400 per primary or general election to candidates for statewide office, including governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general. And then in the next paragraph, as part of its regulatory actions, the commission made similar contribution limit increases for donations to non-statewide offices, such as candidates for the Georgia General Assembly and county, municipal, and district offices. Candidates for those roles may now accept up to $3,300 per election from a single source during primary and general elections, and up to $1,800 per election for primary runoff and general runoff elections. I'm not exactly sure what office Fannie Willis fits into, but as we can see, the maximum donations were at the very least in the 3000s and at the very most in the 8000s, so 150 piddly dollars is nothing more than 150 piddly dollars may be done for a normal purpose to begin with. All that I know is Judge McAfee probably ought to have disclosed this to all the parties. We are awaiting his decision on the disqualification and I'm sticking to my prediction. He is going to disqualify the Fanny from the file and the Wade from the file. But I was just thinking about something else as relates to this debacle of an evidentiary hearing that we experienced together last week from our vivabarnslaw.locals.com community. Someone raised a very interesting point that they hadn't realized that Terrence Bradley, the man who was eviscerated, excoriated, defenestrated. It's outrageous, <laughs> egregious, preposterous. <laughs> it's definitely preposterous. In front of the entire world, unnecessarily, I might add at the end, they didn't realize that that was Nathan Wade's family law attorney that had been talking to the attorneys for the Trump RICO defendants. And that might explain why they eviscerated, excoriated, publicly executed, legally, judicially speaking, Terrence Bradley, unnecessarily so, because he had the audacity. He dared fraternize with the enemy and give them ammunition to have these charges dismissed, or at the very least to help them in their defense, for which Fanny, what are you, you okay, man? Dog seems to 
for which Fanny Wade was not ever to forget and she made an example out of him. This is what's gonna happen to anybody who ever dares do the same thing, burning bridges, throwing friends under the bus if they betray you. It was wild, sticking to my prediction, but that is the news of the day. Now you know it. If you like what I do, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Viva Fry on Rumble, the Viva Fry on Twitter, vivabarneslaw.locals.com on the locals and Winnie the Westie giving us a peace out. Peace out, peeps. You are business partners in, let's say, up till the time you left in uh, summer 2022, correct? That is correct. You were business partners up until that time? Uh, yes, I said yes, that, that is correct. Okay. And while you didn't socialize together frequently, you considered yourself a friend of Mr. Wade at that time? Yes, we were friends at that time, yes. All right. Uh, you are no longer business partners? That is correct. You are no longer friends? I mean, if he's saying that we're not friends, then uh, yeah. I want to know what you think, Mr. Bradley. Do you consider yourself a friend of Mr. Wade? I'll okay. consider. Uh, it goes to potential bias, Ms. Cross. Would I consider myself a friend of Mr. Wade? Mm -hmm. I would. You were asked questions, Mr. Bradley, about the circumstances under which you left the firm. <clears throat> do you recall those questions? I do. All right. And you left the firm. The firm remained the same as far as other employees, Mr. Wade, Mr. Campbell, as the name partners of the firm. You were the one who left, correct? That is correct. And you termed it as a disagreement. You recall answering questions as though you left due to a disagreement. Yes? Yes. And that disagreement was that there was an allegation of sexual assault <coughs> by an employee made against you, correct? That is incorrect. There was not an allegation that you, oh, assaulted it's us, that you sexually assaulted one of the employees in the firm. That is incorrect, but Yes. Yes. Yes, there was an allegation that you sexually assaulted a member of the firm, correct? Yes, there was an allegation, yes. And as a result of that allegation, you left? I did. You were no longer business partners with Mr. Wade? That is correct. The firm remained intact, and in fact, the employee involved remained with the firm, correct? I'm not certain of that. Um, they did leave the, the building, the of bus. course, um, and I don't know. Um, some of the employees did leave. We'll see if he's a little more open on cross now. Mr. Bradley, you in fact paid redirect. that employee $20,000, correct? That is, in, uh, that is, that is incorrect as far as what was, no. On or about the time that you left the firm and on or about the time that the allegation of sexual assault was made against you. Wow. Did you pay the person who had made the allegation of sexual assault any amount of money? There was money left in an escrow that belonged to me. I don't know what that amount was. And did that money that was left in the escrow that belonged to you, was that paid to the employee who said that you signed I never, I never signed any, I never gave any money. I never, I left the money in the escrow account. What happened to that money, um, how I can't. They, how are they throwing this guy under the bus? I, I don't know what happened to him. For what purpose did you leave the money in the escrow account when you left the firm? I left the money in the escrow account. Um, For what purpose? Sir? Don't let me forget my thought. He admitted they were no friends. Purpose. You just left the money in the escrow account? Yes. If there's no connection to the money you left in the escrow account and the allegations of sexual assault that an employee of your firm made against you, why was it that you brought to my attention? Why did you respond? the way you did about money in an escrow account when my question was, did you pay this employee any money? I didn't hand any money. Um, it's, it was money from my escrow account to my knowledge. Um, to your knowledge, where did the money in the escrow account go? To the employee. To that employee. Uh, this guy might be a little more chatty on redirect. Oh, and by the way, he admitted that they were friends now? Was there one allegation okay. or one incident of sexual assault with this employee, Mr. Bradley, or was there more than one? What, what, is one up, what does this have to do with anything? But go two. on, please. To my knowledge, there were not two incidents, no. I'm asking for incidents that you have been involved in. Were there two incidents where you sexually assaulted this employee? No, Allegedly. I didn't sexual assault anybody. Was there another occasion where you paid any money? as a result of an allegation of sexual assault against you. Holy shit. No. Did you no, sexually wait. assault any clients of your Allegedly. Firm? No. Never. Never. Who's Anna Rodriguez? 
Oh my goodness, this is gonna be. Hey, dude, hey. I don't even know that name. You just protected no, the wrong person. Anna Rodriguez. Anna Rodriguez? No, no, I do not. No honor among thieves. Never met her. I do not recall the name Anna Rodriguez. Yep, this is woe, damn, and shit. What does it have to do with kids? I, I would no, dude, let him, let him do it. Let him do it. He'll talk. He'll All talk right, and redirect. Right, this clearly goes to the bias that the witness has towards Mr. Wade. Bias that the witness his motive in in what he was protecting okay. Wade, you dumbass. I believe it's an appropriate uh, appropriate. Look at his face. He's like he's like I was protecting him. His All right. At some point, though. No, no, let I'm it go. Not. It won't. Go much further. Okay. By the way, uh, Judge, if, if, if this is Ashley to continue in this way, it does appear a little bit harassing. <laughs> then is Mr. Bradley going to be excused from his privilege because I do? That's what, what I just said. That's what I was going to do. Don't do that. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> dude, shut your face. Sit down. Sit down. She's what? already done that. She's already done it. Hey, dude, uh, if you're listening, Honor, I'm, I'm they were friends. They talked the friendship stuff. That privilege, although um, based on the answer right now, I think now we've opened up a whole area um what he has just responded to he previously said was privilege that doesn't sound like privilege to me we'll have to address that when we go back through holy the shit no but so, what did anna cross just Ms. do cross. keep going cross keep opening your big mouth okay 